David A. Werblin. $3 million Marvin Webster of the New York Knicks. The $2 million Swedes of the New York Rangers. Long Island Roosevelt Raceway. Arlington Park Racetrack in Illinois. Joe Namath, the Jets' $400,000 baby. Cosmos Championship Soccer. Giant Stadium in New Jersey's $342 million Meadowlands Sports Complex. All are part of the sports and entertainment empire touched by David A. Werblin, better known as Sonny, as in money. He's 68, has retired twice, but still craves the spotlight. After so many achievements, most people would have quit. But Werblin's trying to breathe life into Madison Square Garden. Why? What makes Sonny run? I have one philosophy in life. If you're going to do it, win. Sonny is trying to win these days as president and chief executive officer of Madison Square Garden Corporation, subsidiary of Gulf and Western, Inc. The corporation makes money. The garden does not. Sonny's attempts to change that include everything from personal supervision of the ushers and mingling with the fans to firing Nick coach Willis Reed, signing on boxing promoter Don King, and hiring Fred Shiro to coach the Rangers. Maloney, Paycheck, Plon, and Dugate. Okay. We want the uh, Rangers to be the number one team in hockey. We want the Knickerbockers to be the number one team in basketball. Uh, I'd like to see boxing brought back. We want this to be the superior place in the world. Clean, comfortable, safe, secure, place of entertainment. One of the things I love about Sonny Werblin is he creates the perfect entertainment mix. This is a man who understands stars, how to create them, how to motivate them, how to create a whole atmosphere of glamour. And then he will take that star, as in the case of Joe Willie Namath, and produce a winner. More than 30 years as an agent and top executive of MCA, the giant talent agency, taught Sonny how to do that. He handled the best so that when he left this glamour for the challenge of owning a terrible football team called the Titans in a struggling league called the AFL, Sonny knew what to do. Being uh, the man he is with the background he had in entertainment, he believed in building uh, personalities, sports figures or show business people, and building stars. The first star he created was Joe Namath. Sonny promoted waves of publicity by paying him $400,000 to play, then constructed his team, now called the Jets, and helped construct a league around a kid with flair. He used the word charisma. He said uh, he recognized it in me and that it was important in New York City. I, I never was the one who selected him on his ability. This is the kind of uh, young man uh, who, if he has the ability to go along with the personality, he can make it in almost any field. Joe has a, a charisma. We had some show business things going on. And uh, I remember one time we had a, our fight song. We were training camp one year, and they made the rookies stand up and sing a fight song. And our fight song was, there's no business like show <laughs> And there was no business like the AFL after Werblin, always promoting, sold the television rights to NBC for $36 million. That coup brought legitimacy and money to the AFL, and ultimately parity with the NFL. But competition led to something Sonny didn't foresee, merger. A bitter quarrel with his partners forced Werblin to sell out. By the time his Jets won Super Bowl III in 1969, Werblin was gone from football. The leagues had joined, the contest was over, the drafts were over, or at least the, the free drafts that we used to have. So it was not quite as, as much fun as it was when we were fighting the National League, hiding ball players away. They were hiding ball players away. The backwaters of retirement were no place for Sonny. He missed sports. In 1971, he and the governor of New Jersey chose a salt marsh as the site for a sports and entertainment complex. $342 million, four years, and a mild heart attack later, the Meadowlands rose out of the ooze. And Sonny filled his stadium with two teams he lured from New York, the Giants and the Cosmos, and threw in thoroughbred and harness racing as well, an immediate success that left New Yorkers screaming, carpetbagger. Werblin didn't care. I found so much interest in it, I decided to accept the challenge of uh, building something out of nothing. I think he likes to see things built that are constructive 
And um, I think the challenge to him here in New Jersey was simply that. Operate a person to person to General Mohammed Abu Ghazali. Now Werblin calls around the world making deals for the garden. Gulf and Western needed a savior. They looked across the Hudson River and summoned Sonny. Carpet bag in hand, Werblin brought his allegiance and expertise back to New York. That there'd been an offer for Arlington for 35 million, I don't know anything about that. Do you? Do you want that kind of a look for them, or do you want more of a uniform look? No, less of a uniform look. Uh, the ushers are all right, I think. They, they, they wear... Behind his desk, 18 floors above the arena, Sonny is equally at home selecting uniforms for security guards as he is swinging multi-million dollar deals. He knows he must keep his customers satisfied. Even worries about what they eat. When are you going to be able to get Stevens to uh, modernize their hot dog? When Werblin's long office day ends, his work isn't over. There are always the nights. Nights mean Rangers and Knicks games. Sonny is there for everyone. Sometimes there are rewards. And before and after every game, Sonny visits the locker room. His players may be stars, but Sonny wants them to know they're appreciated. A word of praise, a pat on the back from the boss, means a lot. So do charter flights home after games. What means a lot to the fans is the chance to have a drink with the players. So Sonny has decreed they should stop in at the bar next to the garden after every game. It's important for the players to get the accolades, Sonny says. It is. Through 45 years of showmanship with Hollywood stars, commissioners, and athletes, Sonny has won his own accolades. Sports Journal looked for another side of Brooklyn, but even Leon Hess, Jets' owner, said of his ex-partner, he's a gentleman and I respect him. Werblin is a phenomenon who recognized that sports is both big business and show business, where most of the real action takes place out of the arena. He believes in the same things I believe in, which is to make history. To make history, to make things happen, to get the public feeling great. I think that uh, Mr. Bluehorn made a wise uh, judgment in, in getting Sonny to come back to New York to run the garden. I think he picked the best man in the country to do it. Sonny Werblin in his 20s had a massive heart attack. It's almost inconceivable that now today, in his late 60s, he could have the vitality he does. He draws that vitality from himself because there's nothing he enjoys more in life than proving every day that he can beat the world. Personally, at my age, uh, it keeps me young. It keeps me in touch and contact with young, healthy bodies. I don't have to sit with old men like Howard Cosell and talk about the problems of their wives and their children and the problems of my wife and my children. We can talk about things that are fun and current, uh, but in all seriousness, it, it, uh, it's a contact with uh, life as it is today. Uh, let's uh, face your options. What would I be doing?